Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. So, this video is going to be another video that I'm going to review by Mr. Boxing Eagle. And I thought that this was going to be a very particularly interesting video because Mr. Javante Tang Davis, who, of course, in my view, at least if his career trajectory keeps going in the way that it is going to go, Javante Tang Davis, in my view, he is going to be the new face of boxing. Now, at the current moment in time, I would still probably have to give it to Mr. Canelo Alvarez just because Javante Tang Davis, he's only had one massive pay-per-view. All the other pay-per-views are still pretty good sells, especially for the type of opponents that they were against. But at the current moment in time, I would still have to give it to Canelo Alvarez just because of the pay-per-view sales that he's been doing over the past several years. And there is no guarantee that Canelo Alvarez is going to be down and out until we actually see it. But of course, if he does end up losing to Jamel Charlo, that would pretty much, in my view, be the dethroning, more than likely, of Canelo Alvarez being the face of boxing. Because I don't think that his fan base would be as rapid, more than likely, if he lost to Jamel Charlo. Because even though, in my view, Jamel Charlo is a decent fighter, he's an A-minus level fighter, uh, and Canelo, he has slipped a little bit. It still is a fight, in my view, that Canelo, uh, unless he's a complete shell of himself, is a fight that Canelo Alvarez should be able to win with relative dominance. And when I talk about relative dominance, I'm talking about nine rounds to three or eight rounds to four at the minimum. To be quite honest with you, and if it's any closer than that, that will tell me that Canelo Alvarez, that will tell me everything that I need to know about him. If it's any closer than eight rounds to four or nine rounds to three, that would tell me that Canelo Alvarez, that he's even a little bit below than what I thought he actually was. Because right now, Canelo, he's probably around that A to A minus level. If he actually loses to Jamel Charlo, that would tell me that at this current moment in time, in my view, that he's probably around the B plus level. And if he ends up winning at seven rounds to five or even eight rounds to four, he for sure would have to be around the A, excuse me, the A minus level. But anyway, not to get distracted too much here. Anyways, Javante Tang Davis, of course, for those of you that did not end up hearing the news, his corner, I believe, stated that they are currently not interested in a Shakur Stevenson fight and that apparently they may possibly be going for that of an Izak Pitbull Cruz rematch, which I find so very particularly interesting because I've not really seen what some of the other channels have said. But Mr. Boxing Eagle, who, of course, is a major Javante Tang Davis fan, He's going to be repping for his boy here, Mr. Javante Tang Davis, when he has criticized other fighters like that of Tyson Fury or Canelo Alvarez or even Terrence Bud Crawford, certain fighters that he does not tend to like of quote-unquote ducking certain opponents or not it being a good look. But then when it comes to this fight, he's going to make the excuse and say, oh, well, a bunch of fans thought that Isaac Pitbull Cruz, that he won the first fight, you know, and now those same people are saying all this shit. Right, but for the majority of people who actually have brain cells and for the people that actually believe that, uh, you know, Javante Tang Davis is a great fighter, and don't get me wrong, I never watched a fight in full, so I can't tell you in my personal view whether I thought Izak Pitbull Cruz really won that fight or not. I can't tell you that. What I can tell you is that Izak Pitbull Cruz, in terms of a boxing talent, he's nowhere near the level of Javante Tang Davis. In my view, he's a one-dimensional pressure fighter. That's all he's ever going to be. He's very tough. He's a very great athlete. He has great power. He has good defense. But at the end of the day, you know his game plan. It is what it is. So at the end of the day, I really don't see a need for a rematch. Just my point of view. Uh, you know, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Of course, if you're Isaac Pitbull Cruz, this is a fight that you would want to have. So, of course, I can't blame him for going for it. But Javante Tang Davis apparently stating that he does not have interest in Shakur Stevenson or most recently Devin Haney. It's very interesting because if this were Canelo Alvarez or another fighter that the LDBC or new media were trying to plot against, they would grill them. So once again, very interesting. But anyways, we're going to hear from Mr. Boxing Eagle. And like I've already said, it's stated a multitude of times. I actually like Mr. Eagle as a commentator at times. But unfortunately, with his mindset, not only does he fall into the victimization mentality with that of of that of a fanboy but he also falls that of the victimization mentality into that of the pro-black cult known as the pbc or overall that of the ldbc and new media fanboy you know it just is what it is or that of the pro-black cult it just is what it is 
And, you know, let me not say PBC necessarily because PBC, in my view, is a great company. But at the end of the day, a lot of these guys, and it's not just them, but when you turn into a fanboy, especially one with that of racial motivations, all you're going to be focused on is protecting your favorite fighters. And pretty much you're just going to keep score. You're basically going to say, okay, well, they did this to my favorite fighter, so I'm going to do that right back to their favorite fighter. And that's why in this video, you hear Mr. Boxing Ego say overall that, oh, well, the, the same people that are saying this about Javante Tang Davis, all that other shit, when really the logical approach is, is that if Javante Tang Davis is allegedly worried about getting the big names in the ring, why would you not be interested in fighting Shakur Stevenson or Devin Haney next? And I've heard the argument overall stated that, you know, oh, well, you know, those guys, they need to get their names up and, you know, their brand up and blah, 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 all this other stuff. Listen, all that is well and good, but then don't sit here and tell me that Javante Tank Davis is just aching to get in the ring with the big names. Because I'm sorry, but <laughs> Javante Tank Davis, I don't know how old he is, but I think he's about 28 to 30 years old. Javante Tank Davis is not just this super duper young pup overall from what I remember. So Javante Tank Davis is going to have to start getting into the ring with the real deal contenders, period. But anyway, I just thought that we would talk about it. Let's see what Mr. Boxingo has to say. Let's get straight into it. Let's go. Unpopular opinion. I find it hilarious. The same ones that said Javante Tank Davis was scared or lost to Esau Pitbull Cruz, a guy he beat with one hand, are now saying that they aren't interested in a Pitbull Cruz rematch. Now that it looks plausible, sounds familiar, it sounded like Floyd, easy work, I ain't got to worry about it. Isn't it very interesting? Now, maybe Ego is going to go this route, but remember Canelo Alvarez fighting Jamal Charlo or Jamel Charlo or some of these other guys, even though they're clear, decent A-grade level champions, you know, Canelo was allegedly fighting these guys off of their worst performance. Isaac Pitbull Cruz had a very bad performance against a recent fighter where a certain amount of people believe that he may have not even won that fight. Now, I didn't watch the fight for myself, so I can't claim it. Personally, Isaac Pitbull Cruz is not a fighter that is very pleasing to the eyes for me. To me, he's a brawler. He's a decent brawler, but he's not a guy that has much more of a game plan other than that. It just is what it is. In my view, uh, he does not have a very good multidimensional style. It is what it is. But anyways, when it comes down to it, isn't it interesting, you know, uh, is the same standards going to be applied here uh, with Javante Tank Davis that he's fighting a guy that is now coming off the most impressive performance? We'll see. Johnny Mayweather. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I am back with some more boxing. The best in the business is back, and it's not even close. Now, Javante Davis could very well fight Esau Pitbull Cruz. Follow me on Twitter, at Boxing Ego. You guys seen the tweet? I said, I find it remarkable and I find it hilarious that people now are saying, after saying that Esau Pitbull Cruz won and beat tanks, ASS and all this type of stuff, now some of the same individuals are claiming that they never wanted to see a rematch. And that's funny to me. This is the same trick. Right, I understand what you're saying, Mr. Ego, and you're correct in your assertion. And that's a little bit hypocritical of some of those guys. Listen, I understand the perspective. But this is a little bit of a red herring. At the end of the day, once again, no, any anyone overall who knows the true difference in talent levels really doesn't see a need for this rematch. What is the need for the rematch? And maybe certain people would say, well, Shakur Stevenson and some of these other fighters, they got to build their brand up. And you can argue that all you want to. I really don't mind that argument because I somewhat get it. You know, Javante Tank Davis is the next face of boxing and if you want to make the mega fight, then build the name up. Listen, all, all that is a little bit understandable. But then don't sit here and tell me that Javante Tank Davis is just itching to get in with the big names immediately because it's just not true. <laughs> and that's why Javante Tank Davis at the current moment in time, he is not on my top 10 pound for pound list. He is a greatly skilled fighter. He is a great talent. But when the best fighter that you've ever defeated in your career has been that of Ryan Garcia, I'm sorry, but no. Amen. And once again, Dante would always do these things with Canelo or some of these other fighters saying, well, uh, you know, it would do more money or it would do more views than the opponent that they're going to fight. You know, with Canelo, Benavidez would, 
you know, do more views than that of John Ryder or some of these other guys, so why not fight him? And I don't necessarily mind those standards, but the, th the thing is with Canelo is that at least he's fighting decent level champions. Like, you can't knock Canelo Alvarez's resume too much because Canelo is usually going to fight someone very good no matter who it is eventually. Javante Tank Davis is fighting these guys that if we're really going to go there, they can't really fight. And Ryan Garcia is a guy that, you know, yeah, he can fight and he has great talent, but no one really, no one with a good boxing mind really thought that Ryan Garcia was truly going to win that fight. You know, he does not have a great chin. He does not have great defense. He does not have great head movement uh, when it comes down to it. He does not have as much experience as Javante Tank Davis in the ring. You know, basically, you were in there with a guy that, you know, no offense, but you were supposed to beat him. So, like I said, I need to see Javante Tank Davis. You know, I tell some of these people that he's not in my top 10 pound for pound list or that, in my view, he's not facing the best of opponents. You know, just like when I was talking about Terrence Crawford the other day and I said, Javante... For what he's accomplished, he, he's kind of talking a little bit too much. And, you know, someone in my comment section said, oh, you hate non-tank and all sort of shit. It's not about hating uh, when it comes down to it. It's just that if we're really even going to go there, and I criticize Terrence Bud Crawford's resume at welterweight. Terrence Bud Crawford was fighting better contenders at the welterweight division than what Javante Tank Davis really has throughout his whole entire career. And that's just, you know, that those are just the facts of the situation. So, like I said, I need to see... Javante Tank Davis in the ring, finally with some boys that can actually fight. Not not these dudes that are pretty much going to be pushovers. I'm sorry, but Isaac Pitbull Cruz and Hector Garcia, you know, and Ryan Garcia, that was a good fight. I can't really get after Tank too much for that. No, I don't think that he was as talented as some of the other fighters that he could have potentially fought, but it was a big money fight. And on top of that, he was undefeated. So I don't really get after Javante Tank Davis for that. But Hector Garcia and Mario Barrios and some of these other dudes, like, I'm sorry, man, but none of these guys can actually fight with you. Floyd Mayweather got. Floyd Mayweather would fight a guy like Jose Luis Castillo or Marcos Maidana. The fans would claim that Floyd got his ass beat or Floyd lost or Floyd looked horrible and it was a draw. All these negative things and then come to find out when he schedules a rematch with Castillo immediately, like an immediate rematch, no tune-up fights, go right back into the fire, or an immediate rematch with Maidana, who had just beaten Broner when Floyd fought him the first time, which is why he got picked for the Mayweather sweepstakes. When these things happen, now all of a sudden, those same individuals are claiming that they don't want to see a rematch with Floyd and these guys. It's so funny, but... Ironically, listen, Ego, I somewhat understand your point, but I can't really compare this to the Mayweather effect because Mayweather, when he fought Jose Luis Castillo and when he fought Marcos Maidana, those two Latino fighters, those guys were actually legitimate championship caliber fighters. So at the end of the day, there was actually somewhat of a need for a rematch. Now, I'm actually not quite sure how many people stated that there's no need for a rematch. I'm not really sure how many people said that. The difference is here is that. Isaac Pippa Cruz is not a championship level fighter. So, I mean, you can make that comparison all you want to. I understand, but I just don't think it's the best comparison because who the fuck really is Isaac Pippa Cruz? Once again, it's no offense. And this, this is why I always like to commentate and make the comparison between Canelo and Javante Tank Davis because Dante and some of these other guys, they say, you know, oh, Javante, he's fighting some of the top Mexican guys. You know, when it comes down to why Canelo was fighting these bums. Like, dude, who the fuck is Javante Tang Davis fighting? Mario Barrios is not an A-grade level fighter. Isaac Pitbull Cruz and Hector Garcia, like, like these back-of-the-watch Latino fighters, like they're not real fighters that are ever going to have a chance against Javante Tang Davis. And that's not me saying that some of the fighters again, that Canelo has fought have always had the greatest chance. But whatever you want to say, Callum Smith at the end of the day won the ring, won the ring magazine belt. He won the Super 6 tournament within the 168-pound weight division. I don't think that he's an A-plus skilled fighter level either, but he's a natural light heavyweight fighter, uh, and he's a guy that beats some at least decent guys within that weight division, and he was a legitimate champion. Billy Joe Saunders was an A-grade level fighter in my view. Beat David Lemieux, Chris Eubank Jr., Andy Lee. Uh, you know, when it came down to it, uh, you know, it was known to be uh, him versus Andre, it was allegedly one of the biggest fights in boxing. Those are Dante's words, not mine. And then as soon as Canelo fought him, apparently he was fighting a bum, you know. And then he fought Caleb Plant, 
a dude that apparently Canelo was a quote-unquote ducking a couple years ago. Then Canelo Alvarez fought him, and apparently he was weak. You know, that would be a better comparison. But, but when it comes to this, it's like, who the fuck is Isaac Pitbull Cruz? Like, no one is asking for him to fight Isaac Cruz or Hector Garcia or Mario Barrios. Like, no one cares about these guys, man. No one cares. Enough, Marcos Maidana and Floyd, the first fight versus the second fight. And let me not forget Rolly Romero's bum ass. <laughs> all, all yap, all talking, no boxing skill whatsoever. No boxing skill whatsoever. That man is one of the most unskilled boxers that I've ever seen. His feet is hor his feet are horrible. His head movement is horrible. He his defense is horrible. That man, if it weren't for his athleticism, he'd have a negative record. The second fight actually did better, showing you that there was a genuine interest in why would the numbers go up? That's all I'm going to ask you. Why would the numbers go up if the same fans that said Mayweather lost didn't pay for or want to see the rematch. So obviously these people are lying. They're lying in plain sight, telling you. Right, but come on, Mr. Eagle, let's not play stupid here. This is not the same situation where Mayweather had two very, very tough fights against A grade caliber fighters. This is this is a rematch that no one is asking for against the guy that to be quite honest with you really looked like shit. And his last match when it came down to it. And a guy that's never been a legitimate champion anyway. Like, no one gives a fuck about this fight, man. Like, I'm sorry. And then the numbers might do slightly better than the last one. Because, you know, <laughs> you know, quiet as cat. You know, Eagle never likes to talk about it. You, you guys remember that? You guys remember when I made that video on that? And Eagle was saying, why are you guys pocket watching? Even though he always loves to talk about Fury or Canelo Alvarez's numbers when he likes to tear them down. And compare them to some of the, you know, his favorite fighters. You know, re remember that <laughs> when it came down to it? You know, you know, you know why Ego said that? Because he knew it bombed. Because no one watched that Isaac Pipple Cruz fight, man. No one gave a shit about that fight. That So something you're saying doesn't make sense. Either you And then the rematch, it might do a little bit better. But only because Devonta Tank Davis, he's, you know, one could argue maybe even a little bit more well-known with that of the Ryan Garcia fight. But that fight is not going to do any more than 300,000 pay-per-view buys. I would be surprised if it did any more than that. Maybe 300,000 to 500,000 because Javante is definitely a star. But that's not a fight that anyone really wants to see. Uh, Javante Davis or Floyd Mayweather in those examples, either you thought they lost or it was a draw and you needed clarity, or you were lying about that and you knew Floyd Mayweather beat Castillo, Floyd Mayweather beat Maidana. That's why you don't want to see the rematch. Or you you know Javante Davis firmly and comfortably beat Esau Pitbull Cruz. And now you don't want to see the rematch. But you can't have it both ways. It's either one. It could be that. And I somewhat agree with you, Mr. Eagle. Or if we're going by your standards or Dante's, you know, some of the bullshit that they try to pull. Maybe Isaac Pitbull Cruz isn't the same fighter anymore. Maybe he's coming off the worst performance of his career. Once again, isn't that interesting with the fighters that they like? Uh, there is no such excuses like that. Uh, like Isaac Pipple Cruz is coming off the worst performance of his career. But with Canelo Alvarez, every fighter he fights, oh, he fought him when he was old. Oh, he fought him coming off a bad performance. Oh, that guy never fought it that way before. It's always some bullshit. Or the other. You can't say this guy got his ad beat and he lost, but then you don't want to see a rematch. And here's the thing with Isaac Pipple Cruz particularly, he demolished Gamboa, and then he fought the guy that beat Gabe Flores. So, uh, oh, oh, he demolished Gamboa. You mean the Gamboa that's been French toast overall for the past ten years, ever since Terence Bud Crawford ended up knocking him out? Like, what the fuck are you even talking about, man? Like that, that, that that's so, <laughs> that's so dumb. Like, this is the same guy that says that. Terrence Bud Crawford beat up a washed-up Kell Brook and a washed-up Amir Khan. And I agree with him. That's the truth of the situation. But then he brings up some stupid shit that, oh, this is the same Isaac Pimple Cruz that beat your Yorkas Gamboa. Like, dude, what are you talking about? Your Yorkas Gamboa has been mentally done and physically done ever since he got knocked out by Terrence Bud Crawford. Like, the dude got knocked out like two or three times before he got to Javante Tang Davis, you know, or Isaac Pimple Cruz. Like, like come on crafty guy and he didn't look great in that last fight but styles may fight it was a tall guy and he was a kind of boxing and evasive 
things really like styles make fights where was these where were these same standards with canelo and billy joe saunders or some of these other fighters uh once again uh you know it, it for those of you that are paying attention you get to see what their true narratives are about like that that issue or kind of gave pitbull cruz some issues but nonetheless he's still on a win streak it's not like he's getting slapped up and knocked down or losing he won every fight since the tank davis fight right he's winning against bums uh, and you know people can mention this all they want to but mr ego like i said no one truly wants to see this fight i'm sorry but no one no one even if you're a javante tank davis fan do you really give a shit to see this fight i mean i'm sure overall if you're a javante tank davis fan that you're pretty much down with anything because you like him as a fighter but even if you like watching javante tank davis and if you're not like a mega fan of him is this a fight that you really want to see and he keeps Tank's name in his mouth and keeps saying, I want a rematch, I want a rematch. So don't be surprised if this fight happens next and you get what you want. I know some people are going to cry about it, but I guarantee you the numbers will do just fine. So you guys can see. Well, we'll see about that, Mr. Ego, because Javonta Tank Davis, the last time he fought Isaac Pitbull Cruz, those numbers bombed. And you didn't even want to talk about him because they were so bad. Showtime would not even release the pay-per-view numbers overall for that fight because it was a fight that no one cared about give your tears and again just i'm calling it in advance because i'm great like that ego shodama strikes again the same individuals who complained about tank winning even though he won with one hand versus pitbull cruz there was really no controversy but they tried to make a controversy because it's javante davis a black fighter from baltimore right those are the same ones that... Are well, you know what, Mr. Ego, I somewhat agree with you. Uh, but at the end of the day, once again, you can't, uh, you know, <laughs> you can't uh, overall throw rocks when you live in a glass house. And of course, for those of you that don't know what that means, you know, it's basically the pot calling the kettle black. You're being a hypocrite. Because he did the same shit when Deontay Wilder lost to Fury, all this controversy, you know, or other people, you know, uh, in a way versus Fulton or... All these other guys, you know, there was apparently something up with the gloves, you know, but then when it came to other fighters that he likes, all of a sudden there's no controversy. So like I said, I don't mind you calling out people's bullshit because I tend to agree with it. But the reason why Ego really is not, <laughs> the reason why uh, overall uh, he's not really uh, able to do that once again without uh, looking hypocritical is because he's a massive hip hypocrite. Just is what it is. Claiming they don't want to see Pitbull Cruz. I get it. There's other fights that people want to see. Devin Haney, but it sounds like Devin Haney might move to 140 to fight Regis Progren. So it doesn't sound like he's available. Shakur Stevenson, size of the street, Cold War. I mean, it's just kind of common sense stuff. Easy to get this fight done, and I can definitely see them potentially doing it. Let me know what you guys think. I think the... Oh, but remember, Javante Tank Davis, apparently, uh, you know, there's an interest in Nooya in a way. Uh, remember Canelo Alvarez, uh, we can't give him that much credit because he's fighting Jamel Charlo. But if he fights in a way, you know, apparently at a catch weight when it comes down to, you know, there will be no excuse <laughs> if in a way loses there, uh, you know, because in a way, you know, oh, he's never been at that weight class before all this other shit. Uh, once again, you know, you can clearly see the double standards that come from them as well. And I get it. Uh, double standards come from a lot of areas, not just in boxing, but in sports in general. Uh, but this is why, you know, these guys, they're just never going to get it because they're in that victimization and fanboy mentality. And this is why it's not good to have either of those mentalities uh, because you end up like this. Because when you're a fanboy and when you have the victimization mentality, once again, you're pretty much, you're just pretty much comparing the stuff. You're saying, oh, well, you can be biased, so I'm going to be biased. You know, you can do this, so I'm going to do this. That's why when I reviewed the Champ Side video the other day, he said, well, if that's bias, if I'm biased for Alicia Baumgartner, then so be it. You know, because many other platforms are biased. Once again, these platforms are, are not meant to be logical and objective. They're meant to be a pro-black victimization mentality cult. All right? It is what it is. The real issue is old media, they don't like Gervonta Davis, and they don't give Esau Pitbull Cruz, especially given his last performance, they don't give him a chance to beat Tank. And that's what it's really about. They don't think... Because both of them at their best, Isaac Pitbull Cruz is not going to beat Tank. Isaac Pitbull Cruz is another one of these guys that, you know, yeah, he has a good little defense at times. But, you know, we all know mainly what he's going to do. You know, he's going to come in there, throw a bunch of hooks, maybe try to set it up with the jab. He don't really have anything else outside of that. 
This is what it is. He's powerful, you know, and he comes prepared. But at the end of the day, he's not a smart fighter. Pitbull Cruz has what it takes, even though they were pushing that when they actually fought as a late replacement. Give Tank a full camp to fight this guy specifically. Because remember, when he fought Pitbull Cruz previously, it was supposed to be Roley, but Roley had some legal investigation going on. So that fight got scrapped, and later they redid that fight. But that's what this is about. We got another dude who can't fight. Tank Davis is an A-side. Tank Davis is a boss. People said they needed clarification. Calvin Ford and Tank's team liked the fight. And there was even a moment where Tank said, I think he was asked about a rematch or something. And he's like, nah, I ain't rematching him. And people said, oh, Tank said that because he's afraid. He's scared of Pitbull Cruz. And this was the notion that they're going on. So don't be mad when they make the fight and when they make the rematch based on you fans crying and your lousy emotions. If you didn't want the fight, then you should have never said the guy lost. And then it makes it harder for the business to make this fight a possibility if the fans didn't demand it. But when you're emotional and then you say, oh, Tank got whooped and Pitbull Cruz and he has mexican fans and latino fans and stuff like that and you can do great business then of course that's what's gonna happen so i really blame right mr eagle and i don't mind those standards but then keep those same standards when it comes to canelo alvarez versus jamel charlo so i don't want to hear any excuses if jamel charlo gets his ass canned in that canelo alvarez fight i don't want to hear any excuses okay or when errol spence lost to terence bud crawford or when Wilder lost to Tyson Fury. The haters. Because if the haters would have shut their mouth and just admitted Tank Davis won, then we probably wouldn't have to see a run back and wouldn't have to see a rematch. But, of course, you opened the segue and you broke the levy by criticizing the Tank victory when he had one hand and he clearly beat him. So don't be surprised if they run it back. It's that simple. Ego thoughts. Best in the business. And I'm out. But anyways, that's pretty much about it. Uh, coming from a logical standpoint, because someone's gonna have to be logical here. Uh, this is a t <laughs> this is a terrible fight in my view. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not saying that other people are not going to buy it. It's not gonna be a fight that I would want to watch uh, because I already know what is like Isaac Pitbull Cruz is. Uh, he's not a great fighter. It just is what it is. He's a good little contender. You know, where he might win a belt one day if the division is watered down or weak enough. Uh, you know, do I believe that he's ever going to defeat an elite uh, of an elite fighter? No. A very one-dimensional fighter in my view. But it is what it is. But Ego did a good job using a red herring. Uh, once again, he's very protective of Javante Tang Davis because he's a fan of Javante Tang Davis. And that's why you're not supposed to be a fan when you're supposed to be a logical and objective analyzer. Uh, but Ego is not one of those guys because you just constantly do those comparisons uh, and then you go into the victimization mentality. Oh, well, you guys did this, so it's okay to do this, right? But if you're supposed to keep the same standards and be objective, you're supposed to criticize Javante Tank Davis for this move, just like what you did with Canelo or some of the other guys out there. But, you know, once again, they're, <laughs> that's not what they're meant to do. You know, it is what it is. Anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see what happens with Javante Tank Davis. Hopefully he starts getting in the ring with real deal level fighters because you can debate a lot of fighters over him on a pound for pound list. You know, even T. Fima Lopez or Jamel Charlo, who would be probably at my number nine, number 10 spot. I would put both of those fighters over him in terms of a pound for pound list, not really in terms of complete talent, but just in terms of accomplishments and resume. Just is what it is. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.